The sky really isn't the limit for Maciej Margus, a Warsaw Film School graduate and a prolific photographer. His iconic pictures of Poland from the bird's eye view have been captured in two best-selling books, Warsaw on Air and Poland on Air. He says of his work, nothing motivates me more than the adrenaline I get when I get a shot that no one else has. Today we'll talk to Maciej about his work and his amazing photography. Matt, thank you very much for joining us in the studio. Uh, when you're up in the air in your helicopter or your plane and you get that magic shot and you know it's the right one, how do you feel? <laughs> in fact, uh, so many things uh, are happening in the air uh, that I don't have time to check how this photo uh, went, if they are okay or not. Uh, only later when I see them on the screen of, of the computer, uh, that's when I can uh, see each particular shot. Uh, but uh, there is this like magic moment, like I know that this was, uh, this was uh, good. Like for every artist, it's a um, unique experience. Now, how did you come to kind of uh, decide to focus on, on aerial photography? Because I think it's a niche uh, amongst photographers. Yeah, it's a niche, uh, but at first uh, uh, I didn't know that because uh, there are many drone operators uh, in Poland, uh, but still uh, not so many people fly airplanes or, or helicopters to, to, to take pictures. Um, so, like, it wasn't my plan all along. Uh, I started from uh, climbing on skyscrapers, uh, and later uh, I was thinking about getting higher to uh, to get even a higher perspective. Uh, and then I didn't even have time to think about it, and uh, I published photo books <laughs> from <laughs> air. <laughs> so you were climbing up the side of skyscrapers. Oh, no, no, no. It's <laughs> I took the stairs or the lift. And you would go up to the highest point? Yeah. With permission? With permission. <laughs> <laughs> Did you always have permission? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> oh, okay, so, so very good. And um, when you're up in the air, whether it's on the top of a skyscraper or in, or in a helicopter, what do you think a photograph from that perspective uh, gives the viewers? Because it's a, it's, a, it's a very unique type of photo, isn't it? It's this, this bird's eye view. Uh, it's difficult for me because uh, I'm used to these perspectives and uh, sometimes they are not such effective for me. But uh, only when I show them to people, they are, uh, uh, they are excited. Uh, it's uh, something they didn't uh, know before. Uh, sometimes they are afraid of heights when they see uh, my photographs. Uh, so it's very interesting. Let's have a look then at your, uh, at, your, at your two books which you brought your, yeah. in the heart of Poland tradition. Let's see them. So this is the first one. Uh, it's called Warsaw on Air. Uh, we, published in, uh, we published it with Aleksandra Wogusz uh, in 2017 and it was our first photo book. Uh, it was a great risk because um, publishing such a book uh, was a niche and uh, we didn't know if uh, people will be interested in it. Uh, also, we asked many publishing houses to publish uh, it because we already had photographs, but nobody was interested. So we did it ourselves, thanks to crowdfunding, and then we self-published it. Uh, and it's comprised of uh, photographs of Warsaw took from above. So we're going to show some of these whilst the program rolls, but perhaps you can pick out like some I photos, or maybe even your favorite photograph from that book. <laughs> Have you got one in particular? Uh, like my, my favorite photograph, I think it will be Planet Warsaw, is the photo uh, which won the Grand Press Photo Award. Uh, I took it when I was flying one kilometer above the ground. And I think it was somewhere here. <laughs> <laughs> it's this one. Literally Planet Warsaw. Literally, yeah. Uh, but uh, in this photo book, because we had a great problem how to um, how should we divide these photos? Because we took, we took thousands of them and the book is like 250 pages. Uh, so then I had an idea to uh, compare the city, Warsaw, to a living organism. 
so inside you can find the chapters like the lungs of the city, the heart of the city, the nervous system, and the last one is the uh, city's identity. So the historic places you can see only from the air, but you can, uh, but from the ground you you don't see them. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing work. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's like the ultimate coffee table book of all time. <laughs> it's, uh, it became um, a very popular touristic present. Yes. Uh, and also in 2017, when uh, Kate and William came to Warsaw, they received this book. So it was like, hey, th three months ago, nobody wanted to publish it. And now <laughs> uh, such things are happening. Uh, so we are very proud of it. And you have become quite a well-known name together with your uh, partner there, Ola, yeah, uh, for the book. I hope so. I, I think so. Uh, Maciej Margus does, does mean something. Let's have a look at your second book. You can yeah, put that and book the down. second one, it's called Poland on Air. Uh, and we published it uh, two months ago, the 2nd of December. Uh, that was the day of the uh, rele release. Uh, and it's comprised of the, sit the photographs of uh, the 12 biggest cities in Poland. So after we, uh, after we flew over Warsaw, we decided to fly over all the other cities. Uh, so here we have Krakow, Lublin, Szczecin, Bydgoszcz, uh, Katowice, Rzeszów. And I'm going to be a Gdańsk. bit risky here. Have you got a favorite photo uh, from that book as well? I know you have. You must have one that you really <laughs> like. <laughs> you know, we always, uh, like, the same was with Warsaw, and we had problems with uh, choosing the right cover, like the photograph we should put on the cover. Uh, and uh, we asked people who follow us uh, to uh, take a sur survey and uh, choose the right one. In the end, they chose the one uh, I didn't want to. <laughs> so these are my legs, three kilometers <laughs> above the ground. Uh, but I was already, I, I already accepted that it will be this photo. So here you have uh, the Wawel Castle, the Market Square, Kazimierz, the river, some clouds, Tatra mountains. So it's pretty unique. And uh, uh, I must admit that you need uh, to have some luck to get such uh, perfect conditions for such a photo. And this is what I wanted to talk about, which is in your <laughs> vlog, uh, more than once you, you go behind the scenes and you show how you actually get these epic panoramic shots and the amount of preparation and hard work that has to go into it. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about that. What does it take to get a shot like that? <laughs> so um, I think that in the end, getting the right shot, it's only like maybe 10 or 5% of the amount of work. Because first we need to find a pilot uh, in the right city. So we are not flying from Warsaw to each city, but to fly somebody there. Uh, also, when we want to shoot night pictures, we need uh, to find uh, the airport, which uh, has lights uh, to land during night. Uh, then we need to look for the weather, uh, the permissions, because uh, each city in Poland, uh, over, uh, over 100,000 uh, citizens, uh, is prohibited to fly above such city. Uh, you need to gain special permissions or to try to fly somewhere nearby, <laughs> the borders and so on. Uh, and uh, in each city, the pilots uh, have, let's say, their ways <laughs> to do it. But sometimes you just can't. Sometimes you need to fly like two kilometers above the ground and uh, the city is small, like yeah. Lublin. We were flying a kilometer and a half over Lublin, which is pretty small city. So we were a bit too high. But so, so you have a lens kind of like, how long is your biggest lens? Yeah, so now it's like, um, <laughs> it's like this. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, the other thing you need to, you need equipment, the right lenses. Uh, also, I'm working with two cameras, so I don't have to change uh, lenses so often. Uh, and then in the end, uh, we had many situations that uh, I was driving, let's say, to Rzeszów because the weather was going to be all right and everything seemed right. Uh, and uh, when, I, when I arrived there, uh, we of course took the day photographs, but then uh, when we were trying to get to plane uh, for the night, uh, shot, uh, night uh, shooting, uh, the lights in the cockpit weren't working and I had to come back to Warsaw, then come back to Rzeszów again 
which is pretty exhausting. And I've seen your vlogs of some of these uh, challenges that you have uh, to get these, these perfect shots. And it looks extremely, extremely frustrating because <laughs> the weather can change in the space of a yeah, few hours. It's, uh, so many things you, can, you don't have uh, power. Uh, like I can't control them. Uh, but uh, there is a rock loop in uh, Białystok and there is this huge sign over the entrance, like it's a place from, I think, 70s, maybe 60s. Uh, aviation is the school of character. <laughs> and when I saw it, because Białystok was, I think, the first or the second city uh, on our way, but then I understood that you just need um, patience. You need to accept some things and you can do anything. I had, like... The, but it always hurts when I, when I can't uh, do something I was planning. Then you have to go through the whole process in the case of these two books of selecting the photos, getting it published. How do you feel when you finally have this epic construction <laughs> in your hands when well, you look at it now? In fact, uh, the works on, works on uh, Poland on Air were so exhausting that... Uh, you know, I was working first on the photographs, then I, I was selecting, selecting them. Uh, I need to, to, because here we have 12 cities in uh, 250 pages, so there, is only, there are only 20 pages for each city. And I, I wanted to show spirit of these cities, uh, what they, how unique they are, uh, what they have to offer. It was really, really difficult. Uh, then we have we had uh, some uh, um, editing uh, work to post process these photos to to choose which will be shown on two pages which will be only half uh, then i saw this whole project of the book so many times that when i finally took this <laughs> book in my hands it, it wasn't such effective <laughs> like it wasn't such an experience for me because i saw it hundreds of times uh, but uh, now, after the, because uh, four weeks ago we finished exhibition, and uh, now when I have a bit more of distance and I can see this book, uh, I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a quick advert then. Where can we find a Warsaw and yeah, um, Because uh, we, we changed our name uh, to Poland on Air. So Poland on Air is the name of this book. Uh, and of our uh, publishing house, uh, we also sell prints, uh, so you can order each photo from this book for a canvas print for your wall, office, and so on. Uh, and uh, so you can find us on Poland on Aircom. So and you can each, discover the heart of Poland on this program, but you can really, really find yeah, it. Uh, and in each social media channel, you can, when you type Poland on Air, you're going to find us. You're, you're going to find it. What kind of emotions do you think these photos have, uh, have provoked in your viewers? For example, your pictures of Warsaw, I find, I was watching them over the weekend, and on a couple of occasions, I actually found myself very emotional. Uh, I wasn't expecting to. And you've done some work around the Warsaw Uprising where you've done a, a, an awesome slider that goes back and forth, and you can see the damage before and after. But for some reason, the perspective of being above made me feel quite emotional. Is that something common or am I just a crazy person? <laughs> no, it's normal, but uh, I think the context is very important. Uh, once uh, on one of our exhibitions, uh, we had a visitor. It was a lady who lived for 30 years in uh, USA. And when she came to the exhibition, she saw the prints uh, of modern Warsaw all, uh, all around her. She just cried and we couldn't stop her. It was, she was shocked, she, was, uh, she didn't know, even when she, she was passing the streets, she, need, she had to get to our place. Uh, she still got very emotional. What's unique about aerial photographs is that uh, each person can find uh, something different in them. So, uh, some people are keen on looking for their places, like, hey, I was working here, I studied here, oh, how this place changed. <laughs> Uh, but some of them, they look for the, you know, the whole city, how it's changed over the years. Um, and I think that um, like our mission is to promote the modern Warsaw, modern Poland, uh, to send the positive uh, vision of uh, the place we live in, which is not, uh, I think it's not that common because 
uh, very often you, you don't uh, hear positive things about Poland abroad. And our photos try to change it. Not on this show. <laughs> it's all positivity. It is amazing and it really does uh, make these places look just extraordinarily beautiful, which they are in many of these historic uh, town centres. I particularly like the one you have of uh, Gojina Vu, the W hour. Uh, on the 1st of August when Warsaw comes together to celebrate the Warsaw Uprising or to remember the Warsaw Uprising and you can see the smoke from some of the uh, ceremonies of people holding flares in the island. It was, it was extraordinarily moving. Now there is another problem with smoke above uh, uh, the cities. Uh, that is smog. You uh, literally get to see smog I can in show action. it enough. You got a photo. Of photos. Uh, I, I didn't believe it when I saw it. I thought that just cloud. It just looks like a cloudy day. <laughs> you know, it's... Um very often you can't see it from uh, when you are on the ground, but, but when you fly a few hundred meters above the ground, uh, then it's very uh, disturbing. Uh, is this one. Now, how do you know that smog? Because that's mist, isn't it? It's kind of <laughs> mist. I think I made my uh, personal studies about, uh, um, because I also have uh, photos of the low clouds, uh, like morning clouds, uh, and the skyscraper rising from it. Uh, and I think I found the difference uh, in the fact that uh, the fog or the mist, it's flowing through the city. There is the wind which uh, pushes it uh, and blows it. And smoke just stays in the air. Smoke, uh, like there's no wind in the city and that's why smoke uh, uh, stays uh, between the buildings. So, and uh, it was not a, not a pretty picture, is it? What kind of reaction did you have to that photo when you, when you released uh, on social first, media? At uh, first, like it was the other uh, exhausting uh, photo session. <laughs> I had to wait a few hours before we even could start because there was no visibility at all. Uh, and that was like the thousands of percents of, you know, the, the norms uh, of the air pollution uh, were very high. Uh, and at first I wasn't happy about that session, but when we published these photos, uh, people were complaining about the smog, the air quality in Warsaw, but then some of them started to uh, order this photo as print for the wall, because uh, when you see these skyscrapers uh, rising from the mist, <laughs> it's very romantic. It, At least it, for them. It, it is, yeah. It'd be, it would be nicer <laughs> if it was real mist uh, uh, and not yeah. smog. Have you? But the air, but but uh, smog. Uh, I need to admit that smog is the real problem when it comes to aerial photography, uh, and many many times uh, in cities, uh, smog um, made a, like lower visibility. We were in the air, and uh, I couldn't see everything uh, down there. Yes. Uh, Maciej, what are you and Ola working on now? Have you got a massive, huge project already in your sights? <laughs> uh, we are trying to get some rest, but it's not that easy. <laughs> uh, I think that now we're going to concentrate uh, on preparing such photo books or exhibitions uh, about uh, each city or regions. Like I'm thinking about uh, doing uh, Łódź from Air, Krakow, Podkarpackie. Uh, also in the long term, because here we have in Poland on there, there are only cities. But I think in two or three years, uh, when we'll, we'll make some bigger uh, base of photographs, uh, we'll make like the photo book about the whole Poland, not only cities. Well, we very much look forward to that. Maciej Marcus, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you uh, too. You've been a fantastic guest. <laughs> and of course, you can see Maciej's work and Ola's work uh, in their two incredible books. And keep an eye on them because they're going to be giving you an aerial view of the heart of Poland. Feel free to share this episode with anyone who you think might be interested in Maciej and Ola's work. Or anywhere you find it. In other words, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, online. Send it as an email if you like. And tune in next time for the next episode of The Heart of Poland. <laughs>